What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Styles Files. I am your host, Alan Styles, and we are joined today with a rising star <laughs> in Bay Area media, Carlos Ramirez. If you watch Giants, if you watch Niners, you know him, you've seen him. The game changes. Maybe he strikes out 2 2. I don't care. But that's a clear and avoidable mistake by base. They have to fix this. We'll talk about whether you love him or hate him. That's part of the that's part of the interview. <laughs> I didn't even tell Carlos about that. But you 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 know who he is because you've seen him all over NBC Sports Bay Area doing a great job, Carlos. Thank, thank you. you so much for coming on. Oh, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you. I didn't realize you lived in the peninsula, San yes. Jose, because we're here in Alameda, the island. So I appreciate you making the trek. Actually, Carlos is coming out. Not sure when you're going to get to watch this, but Carlos is coming out after a Giants game. So right. really appreciate you oh, coming thank out. Thank you, man. Don't worry. Let's start here. Um, you know, one thing when it comes to the media is that it seems it, it seems like people just show up. People mm -hmm. just pop up and you don't really know where somebody's come from. Right. And we'll get in a little li later about some of the, the love and the hate you've received, some of the criticisms, but let's just start here. How you got into the business, where you're from, when you knew you wanted to do this. Right. Let's just start from the beginning. Well, I was born and raised in Venezuela, in, okay. in Caracas. That's where I was born. Yeah. I came here to the States when I was six with my mom. Got uh, it. We lived in Boulder, Colorado for a year, and then we went back. Mm -hmm. um, did school, went to journalism school, all that. And when I was 19 years old, my dad had a friend who owned a sports radio station, and I didn't know that. I wanted to become a movie, uh, a filmmaker. Okay. That's what I went to school for. I played soccer my whole life. I played basketball my whole life, all, all the way through college. Um, but I always wanted to be a, a, a filmmaker. Where did you play soccer? Uh, Car Venezuela. In Caracas. Okay. High okay. school okay. and my college. Yeah, like yeah, My school, yeah. all that stuff. Right, right. Uh, never professional. Just high school sure, and college. Sure. That's it. Um and I told my dad, like, listen, I, I want to do this filmmaking career stuff, but I don't know if it'll work out. It's, mm -hmm. it's not an easy landscape here in Venezuela. And he said, I think you need a job. And like, I, I agree, but just, I have a friend who has a radio station. Okay, give me a year. If in mm -hmm. a year I don't find anything stable or that I like, we'll talk to your friend, right? While this is happening, I'm listening to that station every single day, not knowing that's my father's friend's station. Yeah. So a year goes by, I do a bunch of courses, I direct like a short film, I get some gigs here and there, commercials, but nothing that I loved. And I tell my dad, you know what, let's let's call your friend. And it was a radio, a sports debate radio station mm. that was national. So I got the call, I went in there as a producer, and I still remember how the station smelled, uh, the people that were working there, yeah. the biggest in the business back home at that time. So I, I knew I wasn't gonna do anything else. That was October 1st, 2002. That was 21 years ago. Wow. I was 19 and I haven't looked back since. Um, a month, a, a 10 days went by and I already had a, a soccer show. Um, and then I had a, a an all multi-purpose debate show on mm -hmm. the afternoons, and, and then I went to do TV. I started doing soccer. I, I knew my way out of the country was through baseball. I yeah. knew no one was going to come over to look for someone to talk about soccer right. or basketball in Venezuela, but baseball, sure. Mm -hmm. um, that's how it happened. I went to so I made a name for myself in soccer. Then I went to basketball, two sports I played, and I was a massive baseball fan. My whole everyone is in Venezuela, right, right. And, but it was a crowded marketplace, so I knew I had to make a name for myself somewhere else or other sports and then go to baseball, and that's mm -hmm. what I did. Um, fast forward to 2017, 16, I had a job offer in Panama to go cover MLB and Wow, and NFL. I was going to say, when you said Venezuela, my mom's from Panama. Right, right. So, you so, know, I had to throw that out right, there. Right, so I had a job offer from Cable Onda Sports, which mm -hmm. is a big uh, cable network in Panama. Yeah. I was going to move there in September of 16, but then the person who contacted me said, you know what, the country's a bit weird, let's mm. push it back to January. So mm -hmm. that's what we did. And in that window, I get a call from a baseball owner in Tijuana who offers me a job as a media director for the team. Wow. So I could call games and I did play-by-play -play in Venezuela. I was yeah. a play-by-play -play guy for Fox Sports, Latin America call calling baseball games and soccer games. So long story short, I got a job in Tijuana, being the media manager for the Tijuana Toros, the mm -hmm. professional baseball team in Tijuana, and also calling games in TV and radio. I called the, uh, the equivalent of the World Series in Mexico for Te Azteca, which is the biggest Mexico st station nationally. Yeah. And then I got a gig, uh, an offer from Telemundo in San Diego. So we crossed the border, mm -hmm. um, did that for a year and a half, and then there was an opening in the Bay in Telemundo. I came here, that was in March 2019. Wow. 
Um, and then in 2021, I was hired as a play-by-play -play voice for NFL Sunday Night Football in Spanish. Mm -hmm. So we mirrored everything that the Sunday Night Football crew's, uh, crew does. So mm -hmm. I was the Spanish version of what Al Michaels did that right, year with NBC. Right, 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 right. And we had the Super Bowl that year, so it was a whole new crew. Uh, and I did that for a whole year. And then my, I had a contract negotiation with Telemundo, and then NBC jumped in, same family, same umbrella. Right. And they were looking for someone with my profile, bilingual, mm -hmm. young, knows baseball, football, can do a bunch of sports. And here I am. Wow. Wow. That's so, a short story. Yeah, no, that's the short version. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we don't need the short version. version. That's what these shows are for. So what was what was the toughest jump? Because obviously you're in Latin America. Right. And then I mean on it it's it's pretty crazy because you did just come right on up from south to north once right. you got to literally. Yeah, yeah, from Venezuela <laughs> right. on up. So what was the toughest part? And I guess when you when you looked at this and mapped yeah. it all out when you decided you want to do this obviously you said you wanted to be a filmmaker at first yeah did you see yourself i mean we talk about it with latin artists right. the crossover right it feels like you are a more unique case i don't feel like you see a lot of uh, sports media people tv specifically mm -hmm with the ability or given the opportunity to cross over. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not common. And my parents gave me the gift of English mm -hmm. and fluidity and vocabulary and, yeah. and accent when I came here as a kid. So I, I, I owed it to them to put that and to myself, mm -hmm. to put that tools to work for myself. Yeah. So um, I've always seen people from South America or Latin America come to the States and get jobs in the Spanish industry or the Spanish mm -hmm. market. Not many crossover in yeah. sports right um or they're seen as not gimmicks but people who had sporting experience as a player or a mm -hmm. manager so their accent doesn't matter that much right right i didn't do that i mm -hmm. mean i wasn't a professional athlete i played college soccer and basketball sure. and that's it yeah um so i i i did that was when i i i want to go back to like 2013 mm -hmm. and i told my wife listen i i love it here in venezuela what I do, I had the number one radio show, the number one TV show. Mm -hmm. uh, I was the guy who called every single uh, national team soccer game yeah. for the Venezuela national team. So I, I was at the top. I needed to grow. I needed mm -hmm. to go somewhere else and, and test myself, improve myself, and be surrounded by better, more seasoned professionals. And just right. that I think growth lies beyond challenges. Mm -hmm. And you have to always, I could have just sat there and stayed at home and just, yeah. you know. Uh, that's not what I like to do. So yeah. that's pretty much, I, I'm, I'm a very visual person. If I visualize something, I'll go, I'll find a way to it, mm -hmm. um, no matter how long it takes. And it, honestly, it's it's taken far less time than I thought. Yeah. And yeah, I, I've been grateful and thankful wow. for that. Wow. I mean, no, that is, that's a crazy story. Would you say now, and I know how some of this works as I'm starting to get into it with contracts and things like that, would it be hard would you invite ever going back to a Spanish uh, a Spanish station mm -hmm. or do you feel like hey now that I'm here does it I guess I'm trying to say respectfully if it feels like you're in the big leagues I am and yeah. would you yeah. would it be tough to maybe go back but then you say big fish small pond right no that's a good question I I, I never um I never look at any job as mm -hmm. as a, a minus or yeah. or a decrease in my career, you know, or or a back step. Um, no, I think every step you take, it may feel like you're taking a step backwards. Mm -hmm. But how does that step backwards make me go forwards twice or right. take two steps forward? Right. Yeah. That's how I see it. Mm -hmm. uh, I never. I will never. It's my it's my native tongue. I will never right. look down on Spanish media. The money's different. Mm -hmm. The market. Let me give you an example. The Super Bowl. I, I was the first guy to call Super Bowl for a Spanish network in the states. Mm -hmm. Right. There've been sports networks like ESPN or Fox who called Super Bowls, but not a whole like all public yeah. network like Telemundo. When I called it, two million people saw that game. Right. right? That's the biggest non-soccer sporting event ever televised in the states. Mm -hmm. The same game on NBC had a 98 million right. viewership. Yeah. So th that's a, it's a big jump. Right. If I have to go back, I'll do it happily. Mm -hmm. It's again, it's my native tongue, um, and I'll just refocus and recalibrate and make the best of it. Right. Right. And I, I it's just, a, I was just curious, and I guess specifically, then it would be all right. Do I really focus on 
football or do I focus on football? Because right. really right. that would be the that would be kind of the 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 cash cow, right. if you will, right. for those. Well, we don't have to think about that now because you are destroying it. Oh, you are you, killing man. it thank you. on NBC Sports Bay Area. How have you liked how have you liked the transition over? And I got to ask you kind of as it goes, because doing radio, I, you don't have a text line like I do. I got Twitter, though. But you got Twitter. I got, or X, or you whatever got I was X, called. You man. got Twitter. Yeah. Uh, we have a YouTube chat. So just some of the love that you've gotten, some of the criticism that you've gotten, and, and how mm. you're dealing with it, how you right. would say other people should deal with it, just lay it on me. Right. Um, well, you asked me a couple of minutes ago, what's the biggest jump I've had mm -hmm. to take in, in my career? This is the biggest jump by far. Because I'm, yeah. I'm, before, I've jumped countries. When I went from Venezuela to Mexico, that was a big jump. Mm -hmm. uh, I've jumped. I started doing radio back home then i went and did tv so that was a big jump in right. itself but it's same country same language same culture that's it's, it wasn't that complicated mm -hmm. it felt big at the time and i was younger yeah i was 23 whatever um this is the biggest jump because this is the biggest prize at the end of the road mm -hmm. so it, it means more i'm jumping languages so I'm, I'm doing bilingual stuff so it's a bigger jump right mm -hmm. and i'm very not I'm very demanding of myself, so I want it to sound perfect. I, I don't want people to get distracted because yeah. I'll have an accent or something. Right. Like, um, the I, the biggest thing is I'm jumping into a new role with the Giants. I'm the only analyst who is not a former player. Mm -hmm. We have Sean and, and George and, and Wotus, who's a coach, and, yeah. and Richie and Randy and, and all the all the gang. Um, I'm the only one who didn't play, but I'm a sabermetric analyst. I'm, yeah. I'm certified by Saber as a sabermetric oh, wow. analyst. I did not know that. Yeah. So I bring that to the table. Mm -hmm. um, the, it, it, and it was a tricky year because that was a shortened year because of the, the what happened, the negotiations. MLB mm -hmm. started late, a week yeah. late last year. So it was a really quick process, me mm -hmm. coming on board. And I had to give up Telemundo, but I wasn't able to jump fully on board up until, I think, June. Yeah, I was doing both things because I, I was doing Telemundo and NBC Sports. They needed to find my replacement, so they asked me to stay on board mm. longer on Telemundo until they find who was going to fill in for me. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't go off the jump from the start. So I think fans didn't really get to know who I was up until maybe August or July, yeah. August last season. And then they're seeing me every day like, who's this guy? Right. I've been here for five years now. Yeah. But in Telemundo, covering the Giants every day, covering the 49ers. Mm -hmm. I did 49ers games in, I don't in know Spanish what that radios. crossover audience looks like. Right. So, you, why would you cross over? Right. Yeah. So, and, and I get it that fans in the English market – they don't watch Telemundo, or a few mm -hmm. of them watch Telemundo. So mm -hmm. I'm not new here, but I'm new to them. Yeah. So I get the resistance of, well, it's new. Mm -hmm. So that in and of itself brings resistance. Then why should I listen to this guy who didn't play the game? Because mm -hmm. now TV sports, as you know, is filled with former player analysts who yeah. just, whether they know how to convey stuff or not, they're more qualified, which I push back on. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, that was the biggest jump, honestly. And then I, I've, Never dealt with racism before, man. Ever, ever. There's that that doesn't happen in my country or yeah. in Mexico. I didn't deal with it. Mm -hmm. I've dealt with xenoph like with people not trusting you because you're from a different country. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that happened to me in Mexico a couple of times, but it wasn't that. You know, um, but the racism part of it did get to me at first. Yeah. Like the first when it first happened. Uh, and I'm, this is on social media. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I mean, people, no names, no faces, just like, sure. add, I don't like you. One, two, three, one, four, two, three, five, four, five, five. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then when you meet people on the streets, mm -hmm. I, I've never had anyone come up to me and say anything mean. It's quite the opposite. Like mm -hmm. people, and I feel I feel it growing every day more and more and more. People yeah. respect what I do. Now they know me. Now they know who I am. What's my backstory? Right. That I'm bilingual, that I've covered baseball for 20 plus years mm -hmm. in three different countries and two different languages. Yeah. Uh, that I'm a sabermetric analyst, all that stuff. Right. Um, but at first it was really tough because again, people didn't know who I was mm -hmm. and I didn't play for the Giants. So, um, and there was a there was a to me a pivotal moment. One day I was walking to Bart, mm -hmm. going back home, and three police officers stopped me. Mm. And I'm just walking and like, what what did I did something? Did I do something? Yeah. Did, I'm not driving like right, that. Right. I didn't you know <laughs> what happened. And I think it was either he was either Filipino or I think he was a Filipino mm -hmm. American police officer, right? And he says, Carlos, I'm like, this guy knows who I am. Like that's weird. Yeah. And like you know, man forget the hate. Mm. I, I read the comments. You're, you're 
kicking ass. You're yeah, great. Yeah. You're representing like, you know, Latinos and all that stuff. Keep doing it. And then they asked for a picture. Wow. Like the three cops. Yeah. I'm like, okay. And it, I felt like a tide changing in, in I mean, you've been in media before, mm -hmm. you know what it is. Yeah. Um, and that was last season. The second hit was when I jumped into 49ers. Okay. Because I'm replacing Laura and Jeez. Joe was gone. And it's football. And Takeo like, let's, let's was just gone. Keep it real. Right. Like, it's football. It's football. It's, football. So yeah. it's, it's, it's a Latino guy with two African American analysts and Dante mm -hmm. uh, and Rod Brooks. Right. Uh, it's not a very common setting, mm -hmm. um, but the station knows what we know and what we bring to the table right. and the knowledge we have and how mm -hmm. we can make it work. And it worked. Mm -hmm. Numbers were great. Ratings went up. I mean, the team did great. That also helps. Yeah. Um, that was the second blow, uh, which I expected it, mm -hmm. but then it went, it went down really fast. And now I've, it's a complete 180. Like, yeah, no, and I'm and I appreciate you for speaking on that again. This is Carlos Ramirez. You know him, you love him. Even if you say you don't not, love him, even not, if you say fine. you don't love him on Twitter, we know you actually do love him. <laughs> NBC Sports Bay Area pre and post for the Giants and the Niners. And I, I'm glad you said what you said because you know, for me, what I've dealt with is it's interesting. For me, what I've dealt with is just the connections like right. I've been thrown in piles with other black hosts and right. things like that because they're like well if he said that it's kind of like you said that and what he said was racist so that means you think it too and the, and it's so funny because don't you realize putting me into the same pile with another black man is actually is racist, racist. <laughs> right like, in, in itself so no I mean what's crazy is even the people that you said hey I never saw anything like that in person mm -hmm. they could actually be the people that are getting at you on twitter oh, but sure. in real but in life person, they won't do that they would never do no, that no, they no, would yeah. never do that i no. don't know what it is about you know certain people and how they just want to hate honestly i think some of it is just projecting maybe it's things that they wanted to do and never got to do who knows but you know and, you, you gotta let it roll off you, you know, it, it's, it's easy to say that but it is right it's right. not as easy to do. It's not when it's something that you can't do anything about. Mm -hmm. Like you're coming at, for instance, I've I had people criticize me because of the way I pronounce Latino names. Okay. And making fun of it or like saying I'm over pronouncing names. I'm, I'm pronouncing them in their native language. Like right. for instance, Carlos Rodon. Yes. Like he's American. Yes. He was born, but he, it's a Latin name. Yes. Or Tyro Estrada. Yeah. I can say I can say Tyro Estrada. Yeah. I can say Carlos Rodon. Right. I just choose to say it both ways. Right. Sometimes I'll say Tyro Estrada. Sometimes I'll say Tyro Estrada or well, Wilmer people, Flores. Yeah. But then like you're overpronouncing it. Not. I'm just. I'm. I'm honoring the name. Yeah. That's your opinion, and you're entitled to it. I respect right. it. But I'm not overpronouncing anything. I'm no. pronouncing it in its native tongue. Right. And then I'm pronouncing it also the American way, which well, people, I also respect because I understand right. I'm talking to an American audience. Well, people feel like you're forcing something on them when in reality they also say they want people to be authentic. Right. And I would say you're being authentic. But I'm just getting flashbacks here, man, because me. And my family, we get on my mom so much for the same <laughs> thing because she will put she will put the 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 Spanish accent on words that aren't even Spanish. Right. Like she will go out and she'll be like, "Oh no, they're driving a Toyota," and it's right, like right, right. Isn't, that's not even Spanish. What right. are we doing? So right, right. no, I'm I definitely that is funny, man. I can't wait, mom. You better be watching this. <laughs> so so we've kind of covered you know your path and how you've got here and and some of the hate. Let's break but, down. But you know what? Uh -huh. You know, on the sorry, on the topic of hate sure. and, and social media. Um, what I tell people who work in this media or who don't and deal mm -hmm. with this, um, what I tell them is, it's not real. Right. What I mean by that is, it's real people, but it's people that don't come and they don't have any real impact in your life unless yeah. you let them. Right. Both good and bad, because if you, it, it's to me, it's as dangerous to submerge yourself in a pool of hate mm -hmm. than it is to submerge yourself in a pool of love. Yeah. Because that's artificial love. You get it and you receive it and, right. you, and you are grateful for it, but you can't let it get to your head because mm -hmm. that's when you think, oh, I'm the I'm the best of the best. And you know, no, no. Right. I mean, good, mm -hmm. fine. And, and funny enough, the other thing is when you read people like hating on Joe Buck mm -hmm. or Greg Papa right. or Bonte Hill yeah. or Laura... They, there's going to be haters for everyone. Right, so just right. move it along, focus on what's good, focus on how you can get better, listen to your peers, your mm -hmm. bosses, your family, and if they're happy with your job and what you're doing and mm -hmm. you're getting better, 
that's it. Well, and I think that is a good point because I, I don't know, me personally, I would say that if I see, first of all, to your point about the hate does stick out. So as a fill-in guy, I'll come in and the first day, you know, people are excited. Some people don't know who I am because right. we have the YouTube chat going and we have, you know, um, the text line going and I'll see, hey, you're doing a good job. Great filling in. And I see it and I appreciate it. But those haters, they really do stick out to you. Mm -hmm. And and it, it is hard to fight through it. And sometimes I'll I'll let it get to me. And I think the biggest thing for me, to be completely honest, if you are a hater out there and you want to hate on somebody to me if you actually have and this if you actually have something to say right that's I a great will point actually take your critic like your constructive criticism it, even if you call me an idiot at the end it doesn't matter but if you say hey idiot this is how you should have delivered it blah 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 blah, blah and it actually makes sense right. i will at least take it into consideration you telling me that i suck and i hate you that's an that's an empty you're not statement. helping me right. so you can hate if, if i get a stat wrong the and you give me the right stat i'll yeah. be thankful yes I'll, exactly you're making me better right i, right. I don't run away from those i i, I run towards them because mm -hmm. those are the ones that make me better right hey, you got but which is i've never gotten that mm -hmm. no one's ever tweeted out or xed out and said hey this day you said that your storms key did this and that or that yeah. joe staley whatever trend. no it's like hey you're not from here. Mm -hmm. You're Latino. You right. you talk in a different it makes language. Me uncomfortable. And it makes me uncomfortable. I hate you. Go away. Like, yeah. Is that it? Right. Okay. Bye. Yeah. So hate with the purpose. All right. Or don't hate at all. No. Just, uh, constructive criticism. Yes. Constructive criticism. With love. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna make you take off your your interview hat all and right. put on your analyst hat to, to right. close out the show here. I was gonna go Giants. But I'm I'm kind of torn now because okay. I see you talk Giants a lot. And All we right. can get into a little bit of Giants. But I got to get your take on this All right. Niners, Brock Purdy, Trey Lance. Yeah. Where, where are you with it? This is a, yeah. this is a preview, by the way, right. pre- and post-game Niners. This is exclusive to the Styles. Right. Um, it was unfortunate. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was, from every angle, unfortunate. Yeah. I was... We did a Facebook Live on Telemundo the day that Trey got drafted. And I yeah. literally jumped up and down. I was so happy we got him. Um, did you it, want him? Of course. Okay. Of course. Because I, I wanted Justin Fields. No, I, no, I wanted him. Uh -huh. uh, I, Justin Fields' character, to me, feels off. Okay. I, 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 I don't know why. Like, the past, sometimes he's passive-aggressive. Really? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I cringe sometimes. Okay. He's a great football player. Yeah. But I need my quarterback to be a, a, a good, positive mm -hmm. uh, leader with, he's not going to give out any headlines yeah, or, you know, yeah. maybe he's that guy. I don't right. know. But that's the vibe I get. Sure. I might be wrong. Sure, but, sure. Um, Lance didn't give me that vibe mm -hmm. ever at all. Uh, he went through a lot in his personal life, being from a biracial family, mm -hmm. growing up where he did, and he went through so much. I knew he could take it. Yeah, um, he's an underdog. I mean, he never didn't get a very a, a D one scholarship offer mm -hmm. except for Minnesota to be a cornerback or something. Right. Um, it, it, it's a very weird situation because he's he's to me he's not a bust because right. he never played you have to yeah. play and suck to be a bust he right. never played he got hurt twice mm -hmm. so to me it's it's the not knowing what gets me every single time because we don't know what he is i don't think he knows what he no. is i think we know what brock, brock purdy is and, and can be and mm -hmm. when you have a team this loaded this ready with this window to win right now you can't have a question mark behind center you have to go with what you know he got wally pipped it's sports. It happens. So mm -hmm. um, I think it is Super Bowl bust for the 49ers after they made that choice. Um, uh, I think they have to they have to find a way to get that number one seed or a seed that will make everyone, especially the Eagles, come through Santa Clara to get a, uh, a ticket to the Super Bowl. There's no holes. Maybe at nickel at mm -hmm. this team. Maybe if you want to get, you know, dicey uh, kicker is a big question yeah. mark because we don't know what a rookie is going to do, even though he's got a huge leg with Moody. You do, did have a guy in Robbie Gold who was solid every everywhere he kicked. Um, beyond that, man, there's no holes. I mean, the offensive line might not be the best, but it's not the worst. You have the best left tackle in football. D-line, when Bosa is set there, that's a, perhaps the best D-line mm -hmm. in football. Linebacker core, the best in football. Um 
What's not to like? I mean, yeah. I want to see what I want to see what Wilkes does with the defense. Maybe more blitzing, um, having the secondary knowledge might mm-hmm. be an, a nice twist. But what's not to love about this team? Good point. You make a good point. And when people are, I think it's a cop out to me when so, if you want to talk logically, then you're always going to win in an argument. If you want to say, well, it should never be Super Bowl or bust. Anything can happen. Okay, well, what are we talking about? Right. You know what I mean? At some point. You have to, you don't have to do anything, but at some point, I think a lot of people just feel it's almost like you'd rather stink and get the big one rather than just be the bridesmaid every single year and just flirt. And everybody compares Kyle Shanahan to Andy Reid. Now, he's only halfway there. Andy Reid was in Philadelphia for 14 years. Mm -hmm. Kyle Shanahan, he's in his seventh year, so he's basically, he's literally at the halfway mark. And the numbers would tell you, I mean, how many NFC championships he's been to. He's already been to a Super Bowl, one with the Niners, obviously, you know, one with the the Falcons as well as the OC. So I just think you got to get it done, man. And when I look at Brock and some people think of me as a Brock hater, (laughs) I just... I just want to see what he looks like this year. Right. If he plays at that clip, I don't know how they don't win it all. Yeah. I don't. Unless you just get Patrick Mahomes or and really yeah, it's just Patrick happen. Mahomes. Yeah. Because I don't even know if I'm putting, I mean, maybe Joe Burrow, but I don't I'm not putting Josh Allen. Josh Allen took a step back, I think, this past year. He might be on a revenge tour this year. But he definitely took a step back. Yeah, the, the thing is, the the AFC will cannibalize itself because right. it's so loaded. So mm-hmm. it, the Bills will take out the Jags, and, and, the, the, and the Bengals now. will take out the Steelers, yeah. and and the Ravens will take out the Broncos, mm-hmm. and the Jets will take, and so on and so forth. Yeah. In the NFC, it's the Eagles, the Niners, and then there's the rest. Right. right? And it's a long drop off. I there. guess the Cowboys, if you right. wanted to put right. them there, well, put the Cowboys and the Vikings in the same area, maybe. I think coaching matters too much mm-hmm. in this league, and and now McCarthy taking over, uh, calling play uh, play calling duties for Kellen Moore. I think that's going to implode mm-hmm. so bad. Um, mm. I think honestly, if it's not the Eagles, I'll be shocked if in Vegas we don't see either the 49ers or the Eagles representing the NFC. Wow. Wow, Shocked. wow, wow. All right. Well, what do you think? What do you think about Brock? He is very smart, humble. He is used to being the underdog and then overcoming based on hard work, mm-hmm. smarts, and work ethic. And that I think that's a combination yeah. that can't fail. If he was 6'3", he would have been a first-round pick, right. maybe. Or he doesn't even go to Iowa State and go somewhere else in yeah. a bigger program, right? Right, right? But he is six feet. Six one on a good mm-hmm. day, maybe. Uh, I think that's the that's the only thing you look at him and you think, is he like is is that guy with that height and that build up? Is he able to take the punishment mm-hmm. to go through a full 16, 17 game game season and walk us through and take us to the promised land? Maybe not. We don't know. Yeah. Um. There haven't been many of those. I mean, the the Drew Breeses of the world are not Drew very Brees, common. Yeah. Right. Um. But I think he's got the mental makeup and he's got the financial makeup for this team to help it. So mm-hmm. it's it's a perfect marriage. Um I just see him work every day. Yeah. See him learn. He is humble. He is knowledgeable and he's got a big ass chip on his shoulder. Mm-hmm. shoulder. He wants to go out there and prove everyone wrong. Like from he when he back when he was a kid, perhaps, and he was doubted for whatever reason. Yeah. That's the vibe I get. He, he's a s He's a silent assassin in my eyes. Yeah. He, he's not a raw, raw, hey, we're going to get. No, he'll go out. He kind of is. Slice and dice the, he, you. Well, he. I when he say, scores. When he scores. Right. But, yeah, be, but yeah, in the, game. But in the game. makeup towards, you know, running into the end zone. Right? Yeah. He's yeah. not, you know, he's not a, yeah, we got that. No, no, no. He'll, right, right. Okay, let's huddle up and let's next play. Yeah, next play. Yeah, and then yeah. he'll explode. Right, the, right. The, the, the buildup is very calm storm and then you get hit by a right. monsoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it'll be interesting. And I think that's the thing. If you wanted to move off a tray, that's fine. If the, the idea that everybody knows either Brock Purdy can get it done or can't get it done, nobody knows. But it's whatever you, I'm not, I'm not doubting him, but I do think that the doubt helps him. I think that right. it's good right. for him. He doesn't want people saying Brock's the guy right, because right. that's not, he probably doesn't feel comfortable. That's where he's never been. And and the and the thing you question about him and the Niners is the league is going one way. Mm-hmm. The league is on quarterback. They're going taller, right. faster, yeah. stronger. The Giants went smaller, uh, not physically. You know, he's not a muscular guy. I mean, yeah. he's not he's not wimpy, but he's right. not you know right. Jalen Hurts mm-hmm. or Lamar Jackson or Josh Allen. He's a different 
physically built different quarterbacks. So mm -hmm. the league went this way, and the Niners said, yeah, maybe we'll go that way. Yeah. For they tried with Trey, it didn't work, and then you know this guy fell to the lap in their seventh round, and now it's worked out. Let's yeah, you have a Bryce Young who, if he didn't go to Alabama, I don't. He's probably getting drafted around where Brock Purdy. Maybe because yeah. he's, everyone. He's so small. Because honestly, if you even look Tua, at, if even Tua, but it, Tua is thick though. I mean, Bryce um, Young is way scrawnier than Brock Purdy. Right. So if you're worried about Brock Purdy lasting especially when you have a better team with the Niners, I'll just pray for Bryce Young with the Panthers. Let, let me give you a comp. I think Brock Purdy is a smarter, more self-aware um, Baker Mayfield. I could see that. I think he's more... Uh, I think if Baker was more self-aware, more mm -hmm. humble, uh, more in tune with what the room is requesting of him, he would would have had still have a better career mm -hmm. um that's what i would say yeah when you give somebody a heisman and when you and when you did he win the heisman baker or was he just no, a he finalist, he was a finalist. Yeah. yeah he was finalist a couple of times but he did get drafted number one right so then that chip is gone because you remember baker back in the day he walked on i think right. at texas tech twice and then all of a sudden the chip is gone yep. once you're in commercials all right, right to close it out quick and we'll just go quick hitter here your thoughts on the giants i saw a really great post tweet from you a couple days ago i quote tweeted it when you showed all the giants in their ages me personally i'm not worried about the giants because i didn't have the giants winning the whole thing this year right, i think right. they're ahead of schedule mm -hmm. farhan's guys are finally getting up to the bigs so i i wouldn't say it resets the clock or anything mm -hmm. like that but i would say that if you thought that they were going to do anything, I, I think they need to get some big names, mm -hmm. but you need your foundational pieces and they're finally arriving. Right. So how do you feel about the Giants? Not even this year. I, no, it doesn't I, really matter this year. I think there's a, a, a list of unfortunate events for this season that might end up becoming fortunate for the future. Mm -hmm. Roberto Perez goes out early. That's the spot you needed for Patrick Bailey. So yeah. if Roberto Perez is healthy, we may never see Patrick Bailey this season. Yeah, good and point. he's 24. Mm -hmm. uh, Hanniger gets hurt. We see Luis Matos. Yeah. And Yaz gets hurt. And now we see Wade Meckler. And now Stripling and Disclafani got hurt. And now we get Cal Harrison. Mm -hmm. It's the same theme. This wasn't the plan. I mean, the Giants are not the Reds who are throwing rookies out there right. because they need to, because yeah. they want to. Mm -hmm. The Giants need to. That wasn't the plan for 23. Um, the plan was for Stripling and Manaya to be good, mm -hmm. for Wood to take a step up, for Disclafani. That blew up in their face, mm -hmm. right? So they're just playing with the cards they were dealt. I think they're doing a very good job, all things considered, mm -hmm. the amount of rookies they have. I think they're better teams, and I think that's not a hot take at all. Mm -hmm. I think you see you see the Dodgers, you see the Braves, you see right. even the Phillies. They're, they're a better built team, right? But if you take a wider scope or a wider view, a helicopter view of the Giants, maybe aside from the Braves, mm -hmm. I don't see any team, maybe with the Reds, that has a clearer or brighter future ahead than the Giants because right. of the, that list I just mentioned. Matos is 21, Harrison 22, uh, Luciano 21, mm -hmm. Logan 26, Ramos 23, uh, Tyro 27, Doval 25. It's a very young and now kind of battle-tested core that's right. in the middle of a wild card race. So maybe it won't get them. I hope they do make them get to the World, World Series this year. But I think we'll see the fruits of that tree bear in a couple of years. Maybe next season when yeah. they get Otani or Juan Soto right. or trade for Pete Alonso or, some, or anything could happen, right? That That's how I see it. I, I think they're in the right path, and they have – to me, you play baseball. You know mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. That center line is so pivotal for any team that's based on pitching and defense. Mm -hmm. You need a good catcher, shortstop, second baseman, center fielder. Yeah. They have the catcher. Mm -hmm. They have the second baseman in Tyro. Yeah. If Luciano is that dude, they have the shortstop. Mm -hmm. 
The center fielder, to me, question mark. Yeah. I don't think it's Montos. I think he's going to be a corner outfielder. I don't know if you can roll out Meckler every day. I, I don't. I like Montos in center, though. He looks I more like comfortable him. than Meckler. To but me. is he Julio? No. No. Is he, you know, is he defensively Kiermaier? No. Right. Is he Harrison Bader defensively? Tween- no. Montos is just a tweener in general. Right. Yeah. But I feel comfortable with that core going forward. Mm-hmm. And then if you have guys who are ground ball pitchers or pitch into contact, like... Webb and Cobb and Mm -hmm. these Clefani, Harrison's different. You got to have that lineup, and they have it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Carlos, thank you. I mean, you can see why Carlos is just flying up the ranks because he's just rattling off this stuff. We could go for a lot longer, but like we said, Carlos got to get back over the peninsula to San Jose. But thanks so much for joining, Carlos. Thank you for watching the Styles Files. Thank you for listening to the Styles Files. Be sure to like and subscribe, continue to download, and we will talk to you soon. Be safe, be well, be wise. Peace.